My name is Stephen Cox and I just wanted to make some informational videos on how to do some things with the uh, Shapoko XXL. So I saw on the intros of some of the lessons that you can use markers to draw small projects, which means you don't need to turn the router on and you don't need to use a bit. So here's some of the things that I had made. So this is on uh, flooring, so Winnie the Pooh, and you can get these on Etsy if you'd like to buy the rights to use them, or I think you can just make them for yourself. Um, not too difficult, and it's amazing what you can do. Um, you can even do some pretty fine writing, and you can do uh, some face plates for some projects that I have, so you mill those out. This is a switch panel. Actually has a circuit board in the back that I actually cut on the Shapoko. So here's what the tools I made look like. Um, you can easily make them with your Shapoko. There are a couple of people who've made them on the internet that you can go and look how they made them. Mine are kind of the same. In nature, this is a little bigger one right here. So this one is made with just regular pine and half half inch PVC pipe. And this is made with C PVC pipe. And when you put it in operation, you drop the you drop the pin down in there. And I put a weight on top of it so I can weight the line and make the line work better. Same thing for on this one. So just reviewing how I made these marker tools. Um, I'll show you this in Shapoko later, but you just make it to where the marker slides in and the uh, cap catches it so that it doesn't fall out the bottom. This is to add on here so I can add the weight here in the top. And you notice I put tape around it to make it match a little better and I can change the nuts to add more weight or less weight. I carved out the end of it so that it would fit on top of the marker better, but you, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but you can take this apart to get the marker out. And I did the same thing over here. The cap catches the marker and if you take this piece off you can get the marker out easily without changing it. And then this is just a little different setup on the, the bolt. So that fits right in this little notch on the top here. Now, one of the things else I did is the fine markers are a little bit diameter different than the, than the regular Sharpies. So you just wrap it with tape like I did the weight and you can make this one fit nice and slide up and down nice and easily in there with the tape and you can also if you wanted to you could just make one bigger one and use the tape to fit all of your markers if you want but anyway I started with that now I'm gonna go over to the Shapoko and show you the drawing over there so this is how I laid out in carbide create um, not too complicated I'm assuming you're used to playing with it so I'm not going to go into all the instructions on how to build this completely. Uh, you have to wing a little bit of it and practice and trial and error on your own. But you can use this. So the router size, uh, the PVC peep size, and you roughly keep the hole the same size as the router. Uh, the 10 millimeter there at the bottom of the router hole, if you make that any thicker it'll hit the z-axis up and down so you don't want to do that. Um, it's approximately 68 millimeters from the router hole to the PVC hole. And then you, you cut some slots in it so that it'll close. And then you can see I've got the, the bolt hole markers up there. I put the front one at a little bit of an angle so that you can actually get it in. If you don't do that, you have trouble getting it in. Now, one of the things I did do uh, after I made them is I put them in water. and. Um, 
let them sit there for a little while till the water so soaked in. Then I put the bolts in, let them sit in the water a little longer, and you know, tightened up the bolts so that uh, I don't crack any wood when I put it together. I broke one that way. Um, I kind of show the, the grain of the wood. That's what I tried to do. And if you look at my other ones, I didn't do them all that way. So I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, but basically, if you run the grain that way, then your, your thinner pieces are, are kind of supported. So, uh, so that's what it looks like. Here's the, um, the bit that I used and how I set that up. And then uh, the, uh, the contour file is how I set that up. So this is something else I made with my marker tool on my Shapoko. Um, obviously the boy and the girl are bigger than the Shapoko will take. So I made basically two foot by two foot cardboard squares and drew the bottom half and drew the top half and then connected them together. Uh, and then after I drew them, I had lines kind of like coloring to, to paint them. Um, in this case, I painted over the lines. Uh, in the dog's case there, I drew him and then painted him and put him back on the Shapoko and ran the marker tool again and that covered all, all my little paint over mistakes. On the back side of them, um, I just uh, hot glued a, a piece of um, cardboard to make them and, and a base with a hot glue gun to, to make them where they would stand up. My kids like to pick them up, move them around, play with them. Just something fun and wasn't hard to do and an easy project and if they're old enough they can help you paint them. So this is my uh, marker tool drawing a Albert Einstein. Uh, you see it works pretty good. You can see the marker bouncing up and down and, and it draws and the weight on top keeps pressure on the pin and you can change the pin out to different colors if you like. A um, couple things that are important is you need to keep the retract height and for the tool at, you know, somewhere around a 0.4 to a half an inch to make sure the marker picks up off the cardboard easily. And the other thing you need to do is if you have a bit setter you need, you need to go uh, disable the bit setter. I just set my XY to the corner over here and I did it manually. It runs pretty good. Here is the finished top half of Albert Einstein. So now we just have to go in and put a new piece of cardboard in and cut the bottom half or draw the bottom half. Here's what the full Einstein looks like. And here's the one we just cut. You can hear my rooster. And there's the parameters and the rest of the parameters. That's my half, top half of Albert Einstein. You can see that the cut time was only a couple of minutes, so it goes really quickly. Um, no dust, no mess. And there's what it looks like. And so now you just go back and make the bottom half. So to kind of finish this up, I wanted to show you the markers I'm using. You can get a pair of Sharpies, uh, five for about five bucks. You can also get a full color pack uh, for not too much money. And you can get a, uh, off, of, off of Amazon for $16, you can get 18 markers. They're actually paint markers. And you can change the tip from a fine to a, a, a wider wider tip by just flipping it over. They work really good. Um, that's about all I have. I hope somebody finds this useful. Thank you very much for your time.